Oh, welcome everybody. We're getting so close. I forgot to turn on the lights though. Here we go, just another second. And I hope you're all out there. I see there's six of you, seven of you so far, something like that. This is amazing. We're gonna have so much fun today. I also forgot to start recording on the external cameras. So we're just getting it all done. We're getting it all done. Part of the big problem was I was getting ready so early today that I was nervous. I've been nervous. Hey, there we are. Whoa, boom. We're like that, like that live. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. <sighs> Hello, everybody. It is Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to a live version of Making It Fun. Welcome back to my home studio. Last week, some of you uh, might have caught what was happening. I was traveling, I was having a blast, and my flight was actually scheduled to leave. And uh, I was gonna be in the air like 45 minutes deep into our live time together. And I'm like, just let's make a fun pre-recorded. So if you didn't see it, it's available. All of these are always available, recorded uh, later on so that you can enjoy it. Uh, so I did some fun things in my uh, little hotel room and my amigo here, Mike, uh, today is also showing off the minky we're gonna play with. But uh, nonetheless, so um, we just had some fun goofing around and then because we were stuck in the snow on the tarmac for quite a long time, we knew it'd be a while, I was not in airplane mode. So I got to enjoy all of you enjoying uh, the live feed coming out. And next week we're gonna do the exact same thing because I'll be traveling up to Utah to meet with some awesome sales reps and um, talk Michael Miller Fabrics and kind of learn that side of uh, what I get to do. And so at any rate, before I ramble on way too long, let me peek over here at my display monitor and everything. Make sure you can um, hear everybody. Thumbs up. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to not thumbs up. You guys thumbs up. What's happening? Barb's out there. Mary Ann's out there. Tanner's out there. Wendy's out there. Oh, what was it? Romper room where you had like the glass at the end and, and I see Susan D and I see Sharon and oh, all of the fun, fun stuff out there. And um, let me just make sure all of my settings are all locked in. Rad. I've been playing, like I said, for like an hour. Um, I was ready early today, and so now we just, fingers crossed, this all goes super bueno. And uh, at the end of today's live, we have a first massive tutorial launching a 30 minute long project on our awesome weighted blanket. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but I'm gonna save some of the big information for the tutorial. Um, but man, you know, here's a fun story. My life is fun, and this is one of the reasons I'm so excited to be sharing the way I do here now with the live videos. Some of the vlogs, um, life happens when you're busy making plans. And so I was shaving uh, last Thursday when I got home from the trip because I was gonna start filming all of the stuff for the tutorial. And one of the cool things is, let's go overhead, whammo, look at these cool tools on the table. These cool tools on the table are actually tools I made for myself on the wave. And we can talk a lot about them. I'm gonna try to keep today's video to about 30 minutes. We'll see if I can barely do that. but. Nonetheless, um, this bad boy right here is a safety razor or a single blade straight razor. And it's wonderful, um, mostly because the amount of waste I have con or produced, I shouldn't say, I almost said consumed, but the amount of waste I have produced in the last year of shaving with this thing is this teeny little box full of stainless steel razors. And then I guess the little paper that they came, come wrapped in. Dirt cheap way to shave. Now, I'm not much of a beard grower, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking to any of you folks out there that can really grow a decent beard. I'm talking about like, like six, six whiskers I gotta chase down. Uh, probably better just to buy a pair of tweezers, maybe. I don't know. I definitely need a weed whackers for the eyebrows, but I digress. We're not going there today. Um, I did promise you a little more show and tell on the tool, so let me just jump out of the... <laughs> Uh, problem I was causing for myself there. Yeah, if anyone's ever interested, and today's not a sales uh, promo for this at all, uh, we're gonna talk fabric instead, and I don't even have any of this stuff for sale, really. Robapel.com has a couple of the fountain pens, but I just wanna show um, like the fun of what it is and what we can do by being creative. So I have a fountain pen I made for myself. This tool here is a Seam Ripper Stiletto Combo, my absolute favorite sewing tool. Um, this is a mechanical pencil, this mechanical pencil here uses a two millimeter uh, chalk or lead. And so I don't know if you can see in my magic little container there, probably not, there's a lot of glare on that, but 
at any rate, there's 36 different colors of lead right in this little tube about the size of a pencil. And it's rad because then I can travel with my beautiful um, journal here and uh, my writing tools, my inking tools, and then my you know tool of destruction there, the old slice and dice razor tool. So at any rate, so what I was starting to talk about as I just gashed the upper part of my lip, wicked, came sideways. Uh, bleeding everywhere. So I didn't film on Thursday. I couldn't. I just, every time I smile, ow, it still hurts. Ow, ow, don't do that. If I smile big, it hurts. Um, and so then uh, Friday we filmed. Uh, that was fun. Or I should, we, Mike and I, you know, Mike and I over here filmed. He works hard with me. I appreciate all that he does. Um, but he couldn't make my lip stop bleeding. So at any rate, it's in, it's in a bunch of the fi pictures. It's in a bunch of stuff. It looks like, you know, just I got dirt all over my face and stuff. So anyways, it's funny. But like I said, life is what happens when we're busy making plans. Let me check in on all of you. Oh, Peggy uses a safety razor um, on her legs. And now she says, sorry, she brought that up. And I guess I'm sorry that I start reading out loud sometimes. Sorry, Peggy. Ow, it hurts again. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see, PJ's out there, awesome. That quilt is a beautiful backdrop. Oh, thank you, PJ. Don't get um, too attached to it. We've got another one we're working on that's even more awesome if uh, quilts can be more awesome than each other. Maybe just different awesome, maybe is what we should talk about. Um, oh, 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 we're talking about awesome. Let's go back right here real quick because I'm gonna clear off my table a little bit and get ready to show some awesome because one of the favorite things I figured out to do quickly other than play uh, hide and go seek in my studio is I get to show fabric right now today that like I found out it's on the road heading out and so I get to coordinate my projects so that you can see stuff that you can run into your local quilt shops and support your local vendors and grab fabrics it's just awesome so I believe if everything went correctly uh, on the tutorial, I forgot to do it here. On the tutorial, I put a link where we have on michaelmillerfabrics.com a local quilt shop locator where you can find, uh, where you can purchase the finest quality fabrics. Anyways, so fun with that. And a couple weeks ago, I showed you this awesome, awesome color strata line. Now we're gonna zoom out so you can really see what's going on. And the color strata line is really, really awesome. Now you're looking at it on paper here right now. Um, on the outside, here are the fabric colors. And we're gonna come at you with several different color families or, or palettes over time. And this is just this gorgeous palette right here um, that I'm just in love with. And I like it because of the richness uh of it. And I just see so many landscape quilts coming out of it. But the reason I'm excited is we also are providing kits and more pre-cuts and things, ways for the quilt shops to have things that you can run in. You see these videos, gives me the opportunity to maybe make videos that you can um, follow along. That's one of my ideas. So this is an awesome new kit called the Mardi Gras quilt. And I love it. Now you may have, if you know the Rob Appel from the past, you know I'm a big sucker for the jet black and I love the way black works. Uh, again, I'm, I have the ironing board uh, in black right here on the table today. I love the, love, love the way the black works in the quilt. But the way the gradients in this strata here are also working, my goodness, I mean, this is just gonna work fantastic for these kinds of projects. So at any rate, um, there is a kit that is shipping out. Uh, I believe the quilt shops are getting it right now so you can uh, visit your local quilt shop. And with that said, I still think we need to come up with a code word. So we need to work together today to come up with some sort of like a password, a code word, you know, where you can sneak up to the quilt shop, you know, and Mike sent me, let me in, Mike sent me. Or, or even more better, like a, I like Mike or something like that. Like let the quilt shops know that you're watching these fun videos out here that are supported by Michael Miller Fabrics. And then it's just kind of the win, win, win. And then you can communicate with them. They can communicate with me. You can communicate with me and let me know what you want to see. And then I've got these fun projects so that I can make them right here while making it fun. This is awesome. Uh, Jules loves the fabric. Um, and so does Anna love it. And I love both of you for, um, you know, being out there and following along and purple. Um, here's a quick other story. <sighs> I got to visit the hometown of Prince, the artist, uh, last week. That's where I was coming home from. And uh, he, I went by his recording studio, a purple fire hydrant out front. Uh, maybe I'll throw one of those photos on Instagram this week. My problem was, is I shot a video, but I did a terrible job. And my 15 year old son, who is also in charge of technology around the house nowadays said, dad, 
don't post it. That's a terrible video. The audio was terrible. It was a terrible video. So I didn't post it. I'm sorry, but he was right. And so I'm trying to learn to post the best stuff too. So you can trust me here that we're working hard to do great stuff. Um, to you know, make sure that you're all really enjoying what we have available for you. Um, like these cool kits, blah, 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 blah. Nice segue, maybe. Kit from Mardi Gras, fabric, awesome, awesome. Like Maybe just this one piece of fabric, if I had to pick a favorite, I don't know. Maybe you guys wanna see that a little closer? There, there's shades of blues and greens reading through here in person that are just delicious, if I can say that about fabric. Um, because I'm also seeing how that plays into other things and I don't even know color wise if it's going to segue. I don't think it does because maybe, I don't know, this is pretty rich stuff here. Check this out. Next fabric line. This is fabric line. So this is in the trucks, in the planes. It's heading towards your local quilt shops right now. And not only do I love the name, but I love the line. It's called Fish Topia. And it's just super cool. Let me start you with what we'd consider more of that traditional uh, color family in here. And um, so you've got a, just a really neat variety of prints going on. Uh, make sure my camera is going to hold still so that we can now really enjoy it all together. Um, now, as you see Fishtopia, uh, oh, I think it might work. That other that color I was just showing you out of Strata. At any rate, we've got a beautiful all over, super fun fish print. Like, I mean, this guy's just great, right? But I also love the way the lines are going to read through here and the different directions that our background prints run. Um, coordinates wise, I want to make sure you can see what I can see. Uh, if you're not aware here on the live, well, I'm always running all my cameras and lights and microphones by myself. So, um, I do my best. That's, that's what I'm going to say. I'll show you some coordinates. I'm getting better and better. I feel like that. You know, I, I've always been promoting the fact the more I sew, the more I quilt, the better I get each stitch I do. But man, I think the same is with photography. Uh, sat last Saturday was prom. Some of you enjoyed on my personal Instagram or Facebook page the beautiful uh, photographs we got of my son and his fantastic friend slash date uh, bandmate who went to prom together. Sorry, I'm forgetting to talk about Fishtopia because I'm, I'm watching the fabrics. Oh, what a dork I am. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back and say stuff about Fishtopia because Fishtopia is rad. And again, look at how cool it is against the black. I know black and tropical fish don't often work. You wouldn't think, but when I show it against that gray, shazam! I mean, this stuff is coming to life if you ask me. And, um, you know, the other thing is, again, why you should visit your local quilt shops is because you can't quite see. I today took the time to adjust all of the um, uh, aperture and the white balance in all these cameras to be the same. And I guarantee that they do not look exactly uh, on your computers like I can see in person. I just love this beautiful creamy background here. This is a deep, fun, good background texture, the black and white. I just showed you this really fun stripe, right? But that plays into that background over here too. So for the quilters coordinates, of course, our polka dots. And this also, um, you know, I like my garment when it comes to garment. I got my start uh, doing the Aloha shirts. So this piece right here is going to read fantastic for those of you who want to do Aloha shirts. Um, same with this one. That's what I was working for, right? A little lighter color there. Okay, so that's Fishtopia, and then you also have a nice sand color in the back. Perfect line, I love it. It's, of course, I'm a fish guy. Why would I not love it, of course? But you're like, Rob, Rob, yeah, Rob, this is misleading. You've got the top three things to do when sewing with Minky posted up on the header today, and you're talking about fish fabric and showing cardboard over there. Like, what gives? I know what you're saying. Let me check the comments for a what gives. Anyone give me a what gives over here? Um, okay, I got a, a question uh, from Deborah. I'm going to try to answer about the quilt shops on the Central Coast. I'm not sure I'm making myself clear, nor do I know exactly what you're asking, Deborah. What I'm trying to do here and promote here, this is a great time to throw this on the table, is I want to promote all of us supporting our local businesses. I do a lot online. Today, we are online together as a community, and I do shop online. I put together some of the parts of my studio online. But I also bought my camera, and I have now visited the camera store four times just to 
I took in the pictures from prom to show them what the tool they sold me, what the advice they gave me, and, and what it did for me. And I was very proud of my work and I was very excited. And I was able to make a personal connection. And, and when I bought the camera, Joseph, the young guy at the camera shop, promised me he would help me as long as I never came back with the camera set to automatic. So that was two things. One is we support each other locally in person. And two is when we buy a lot of stuff online, uh, uh, this might be a perfect segue. I might be building a good segue. There's a lot of information. And as I was building the studio over the last couple of months, man, every time I turn around, I'm learning something new. I'm getting something better and better and better. And in the tutorial I'm putting out, you're going to see there's some yellow and there's some um, white balance issues, things going back and forth. Like I'm right now, I'm going to check to make sure that I'm even talking into the proper camera so that we're together. <sighs> so what I'm saying is when you get too much online, it just, it just uh, overstimulates. It, it, me, maybe you too. I don't know. Because we're going to talk about our weighted blankets today. We're going to talk about the fact that April for sewing is autism. Mean, excuse me, I might have said that wrong. April is Autism Awareness Month. And sewing, I truly believe, and there's many people out there that will agree with me, sewing is one of those things that we do to not only feel better ourselves, but to f help others feel better. Make a quilt, give a quilt away. Boy, the person who receives that quilt is going to feel fantastic, but it feels really amazing to give that quilt away. It's a win, 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 you know? So what I'm trying to say is, to Deb's comment on the Central Coast, I do not know what shops carry what fabrics. I can't keep track of all of that. What I want you all to do is go into those quilt shops and let everybody know. I want to make sure that there are local quilt shops available so that when you need the perfect piece of fabric right now, you can jump on your car and drive down there and match to it by carrying your swatch in, going along their color wall and saying, ah, that right there, that's the one I want to use with this piece because it's going to make the quilt have the energy that is necessary. And as much as I love the internet, as I was just saying, you cannot truly read fabric colors and blend colors and build quilts with the same kind of passion that I want you to online. So I'm going to show fabric that Michael Miller produces and sends to local quilt shops. There is nothing for sale on this channel. And you are going to go to the local quilt shops and you're going to buy that fabric and they're going to say thank you to Michael Miller by buying more Michael Miller. Win, win, win. And now, as I promised, some of these great tips about sewing with Minky. Comment check. <laughs> Uh, yes, quilt shops locally on the Central Coast. Thank you for the follow-up, Deb. There's an actually quilt shops of the Central Coast dot org, I believe it is, um, where they list like there's a bunch of shops up and down, and everywhere I go, all of the quilt guilds and all the quilts, you know, shops are so excited about their shop hops they do, their row by row experiences, all the things that they're doing to help support you and help inspire you day by day by day. Now, if all goes well in my plan, in a few months from now, you'll walk into a local quilt shop and see this video playing over and over again, because that way everybody's benefiting for what is being created. And that's what I'm really, really jazzed about doing here. And so as I was starting to mention, um, several years ago, actually the very first, one of the very first projects I made at Man Sewing, and another question I've been getting for months now, what happened to Man Sewing? Man Sewing uh, was a YouTube channel that I was asked to do from Missouri Star Quilt Company. And it was a huge blessing. But at the beginning of 2019, it ended. And I'm here. Easy. End of story. This is the new man sewing, so to speak. Those videos are out there, but these are where I'm putting my energy in the new stuff. But yes, I did a cool, cool weighted. Waited. Ready for this? I mean, <laughs> that's rad, right? I think this thing's weighing in at about eight pounds. But this is an all minky patchwork top weighted blanket. Let's give you an overhead. Oh gosh, the table's still shaking. This is crazy. Okay, and I'm using our super fun minky fabrics from Michael Miller here called Sloth and Circumstance, and I'll lay it out for you. 
Oh, are those guys terrific or what? Now, Minky, if you don't know, is a polyester-based fabric that just feels like, oh, silk. It's like petting kittens all day. Like, I mean, these guys are just amazingly soft and I just absolutely love it. And so even though you're looking at the green one here, let's switch cameras around for a second and put up these guys, the bright guys with the bright quilt here, is that fun? So uh, sloth in circumstance also comes in a very fun and bright color way. You can see we've got some easy coordinates and the, uh, the dimples there or the uh, little goosebumps. I don't even know the name. I'm supposed to know the names of this stuff. Huh. It's a silky minky dot is the name uh, on the header card. I'm, I'm busy making videos. Give, give me a break. So at any rate, um, now also with the fun, we have the other colors um, like that. Now these are fun. I'm gonna throw them down overhead so you can see them real quick. These are some of the other fun ones I wanted to promote and I think my eye just caught a comment that might be really important too. So let's go overhead for you. Let me check these comments. Uh, yeah, a comment from Sharon talking about a boy with Asperger's that she uh, babysits for, loving the vibration and the sound of the sewing machine. Um, you know, uh, let's just talk about this. I don't know, I might even tear up here. I'm not sure. Several people have asked me where on that spectrum do I lie within autism. I don't know. I make the joke, you know, ADHD, I never sat still long enough to take the test. I struggle so much with focus. And the older I get, I'm actually finding it's harder and harder. And I think some of it's because I have an iPhone in one hand, an iPad in the other. I've got a comp I, lots of vibration, lots of stimulation. And so, yes touch and feel, and for me, it's compression. I mentioned it even in the tutorial. My wetsuit, the way it squeezes me and the way it feels on my body, it gives me this amazing sense of security and warmth, even when I'm out in the ocean and the waves are getting a little weird and stuff. So I strongly believe in fiber and touch and the way it helps folks uh, soothing. Whether you know if you're on the scale, whether you're dealing with folks that are on the scale, I don't like to make labels. I just know there's a lot of times in my life where I feel like I'm about ready to pop and having something where I can just chill out like a nice heavy weighted blanket on me. If you haven't experienced it, uh, when you go to the dentist, the, the lead vest they put on you, on the front of you for when they're x-ray, that mm, weight, it's just amazingly nice. Whether or not you struggle with being overwhelmed or whatever else, right? Like, let's just not make the labels and let's just talk about making the quilt. So, but one of the things is, is boys, little boys often, um, right now my wife's a school teacher, so she sees a lot of it numbers wise. And so I just wanted to show you these really fun prints that for boys and or girls, I got my robots for my girls and these stripes and all kinds of stuff. But I just want to point out that their minky comes in a bunch of fantastic prints. And one of the things I love about the Michael Miller stuff is that the detail in the print, even though it's fuzzy, I don't know if you can even see that that's fuzzy. So at any rate, these are also fabulous new ones coming out. Dino Dash, Robo Pals, and these are fantastic minkies that are hitting the shops. I've got sloths and circumstance, and I've got some work to do on those three steps I promised you for the weighted blanket. Now, I used up every single poly pellet I could find, even the ones that were floating around on the floor in my thing. So like I said, it's about eight pounds. And what the concept was, was to make a patchwork on the back, it's a single layer of the minky. And then I stitched, stitch in the ditch, row by row, first columns that then I could fill the beans into. Oops, I realize I am still overhead. There you go. I made these columns, right, that I could then fill beans into and then sew channel by channel. All that's in the tutorial. Check it out. You're going to love it. But I learned so many new tricks just because I was doing patchwork work with minky, where in the past I'd used it for other things. So let's get that. Ooh, out of the way and talk about a couple of those things we've learned. And if all goes well, I've got some funny little things here. Okay, I think this is step one. Boom. Use the right tools and um, the right tools. What does that mean? Well, first of all, not only am I talking about using a sharp rotary blade, which I switched to, but also the larger rotary blade. There's a video we did um, about the different rotary blades and what the sizes mean. This is the 60, 60 millimeter. The bigger the wheel, the deeper the cut. The deeper the cut, 
the um, better we're going to do in keeping track and what am I trying to say? And I'm sorry, I got distracted. I'm watching the clock over here. I still cut my minky in about six layers. So the deeper the layers get, the harder it is for the tool to actually even make contact because of the hardware. So that's where I like these 60 millimeter blades for thick, more pile stuff. And minky comes in all different thicknesses as well. So having a dip, a bigger rotary cutter and a nice long mat because the minky is also 60 inches where most fabric is 45 inches long, right? See if I can turn that tip off there. Okay. And then the other thing that I use now, not when I'm doing the patchwork, but when I'm doing all of the layers where I can have more shifting, I was definitely using my walking foot. So let me go to my overhead there. So you can see if you're not familiar what the walking foot is. And the walking foot here is going to ride on the sewing machine and uh, it rides on the needle bar itself and it helps all these layers travel together nice and thick. I also use on my um, machine there, you can see I'm going to have a little edge guide set up. And on that edge guide, I've got it set to a quarter of an inch, but I wouldn't have my feelings hurt if you use three eighths. A little bit bigger seam allowance is going to help you a lot um, because the other thing we're going to talk about one of the next steps, I guess I can't say it, but it's how you handle the fabric. And so a quarter inch, if you're new to quilting, might be difficult or a little challenging, let's say, um, on the patchwork side. So just go to like a 3 8 but just uh, what I'm also trying to think through the nice way of saying it, it's going to affect the math of what you're doing. So either account for extra minky or just understand your project's going to get a little smaller in the patchwork. Most folks aren't doing like Mariner's compass stars out of minky because of the points and all of that. If you don't know my quilting humor, hey, stick with us. We'll teach you more quilting so you'll understand my silly quilting jokes or what I think is so silly. Uh, at any rate, um, the other thing let's talk about and needle choices. I grabbed the ones from my actual machine and the ones from the actual machine, where they go, um, are a little different. So I don't want you to get too tied into what they say, but that 9014, I don't know if you can see that, but I am using the size 9014 needles in my machine. It's a little thicker needle. I still like the top stitch. Um, needles, uh, excuse me, I said top stitch. I meant to say the sharps. I know top stitch is a needle that a lot of folks like to use a lot, um, but they're really designed for decorative threads. And I'm using polyester thread because it's a polyester fabric. So I'm going to prefer to use the sharps or the Microtex version of the 90 size or the 14 sli size. I'll do a video on needles pretty soon so you understand the different sizes. Uh, in the machine because as I sew through thicker and thicker layers, I want to make sure everything's moving uh, effectively. So at any rate, that was the first clue or the first tip was using the actually the right tools to the job. Now, let me see what I've got for my second tip. It's nice having these little cue cards up here. Ah, uh, yes. Ha. Huh. The old clean as you cut tip. You can do it a variety of different ways, but I tell you, I do not care for all of the fiber that gets loose, especially with the higher pile minkies. So let's take one of these. This is the regular solid color. This is the olive color from Michael Miller that I love and that I matched in with the sloth and circumstance. And as I show that quilt, you might have seen, um, it, depending on which direction you stitch with it, you're going to get different shading in the greens, which is kind of fun. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be getting myself organized here so I can see what's going to happen. And I've kind of folded it, keeping it aware that there's going to possibly be shifting around. So what I'm right on do right now is get lots of layers so that when I cut, you can see that thickness I was talking about with the blade. But another thing that I can do to try to make sure that things are as square as possible is when I look at my ruler, let's turn that off so you can see maybe a little bit better. As I look at my ruler and the reflection of my light overhead, there you go, sorry. Uh, I want to see the line at the top of the ruler running in the fold and the bottom of the ruler running in a fold. And I'm going to take that. And what that tells me is that my lines are all squared right now. And I'm going to take a cut right now to come through here and I'm going to make a nice squaring, truing cut. Now, what happens though is because it is a 
longer pile, longer fiber, is it wants to shift around. So one of the things I like to do is, let's say I have to make, uh, like I was doing for the project, five and a half inch cuts. So I'm going to use my ruler. I like this ruler because it does show me the five and a half inch marks throughout the body of the ruler. A little easier to see it and read it. Lining that line up on my five and a half, I'm going to cut now left-handed. And if you did not have the bigger blade, this would be impossible. Ask me how I know. So as I cut this way, and if that was all the cutting I needed to do, I can... If the baby's asleep, I can use the lint roller. I can come in and I can just lint roll up and it works pretty good, kind of. But you might find, if nobody's listening, the little vacuums are the best. Now, I won't do it for long, but just to show you what is really cool, uh, it's gonna get loud, turn your volumes down. Are they down yet? All right. Turn the volume back up. Yeah, you gotta turn it back up so you can hear what I'm gonna say next. Is it up yet? All right, good, okay. So now, <laughs> I'm goofing. So at any rate, a lot less fiber now on here, but if I have a bunch of detailed cuts, like every time I, I want this line to stay true. So what I'm trying to say is I do it every few cuts and I try to manage getting all the fiber and things back in while I'm working with it so that it doesn't get everywhere else throughout the studio and doesn't get stuck to things like the lint roller and that kind of stuff. So that trick works really, really good, especially if you have one of these little mini shop vacs uh, around and I keep it literally plugged in under the table for all the dust and stuff that I get kicking up. But the minky, it's fantastic for. Now the other thing, let's cut down a couple of squares. I don't even know if I cut the right side. Oh, this one's five and a half inches. That was the other thing. Yeah, I should point that out real quick, is if you fold too many folds, the ones on the inside might be short. So these were supposed to be five and a half inch squares. And when I unpacked a few of them, because I tried to cut too many layers, I ended up with a couple that were like four and three quarters or something. They were literally three quarters off. It was awful. Um, so back to cutting my fives, and this is a good trick just to know for your or five and a halves so that you can make your project after watching the video today. Now all you're going to do, just go right back overhead here, cut. Now I can slide this over five and a half because what I want to show you next is kind of cool. And I knew this, but I didn't know this, know this, like I didn't get it. And you can see it in the quilt. Part of this is what happens when you sew with velvets or anything with a lot of nap or a lot of pile. First of all, let's see, the best way to show you this, right here. This minky fiber has almost no stretch in this direction, yet has a good amount of stretch in this direction. Can you all see that? So what I did first of all, I wanted to make the most secure patchwork. So I found in the sloth print, there was no stretch that way and a little stretch that way. So to make things successful, I first just started matching no stretch and no stretch together. Then I would just go right sides together like this and I would come over to the machine. Now, let's do it here. There's this, you know, you make, you sew, you know what I'm about to say. Like, I couldn't, like, every time I tried to scoot up the corners, like, it kept backing itself up. And it only, let's see, there's about 108 squares, so at about 94, I figured this out. I kept putting the piles, like, in opposite directions, and so it was causing, no matter how hard I tried, my squares were still coming out, even five and a half inches, like, still all over, even with no stretch. So... Oh, I also just saw a good tip. I'm looking at the tips too. Uh, 45 minute, throw all your pieces in the dryer, uh, you know, just on an air dry, gets them all off too. Yeah, that's fantastic. And then you get a little extra, like a, a nice beanie you can wear of the lint. You could actually felt that up and make a beanie out of all that. Um, so what I'm also now gonna try to show you, right here on my stretch, okay, here we go. No stretch, but the fiber is running this direction. If I, if I rub it like this, it's like rubbing a shark. It actually, you can feel it's going the wrong direction. Don't do it to your cat at home. They'll let you know they don't like it. 
So, same thing. When I started to pet the minky, the solid, you could really see. So what I want you to try to do whenever possible, just as a tip, but today's just about tips. Take these, not only make sure your stretches, now make sure that your fibers are also in the same direction. And then that way, as you lay them like this, and then as you start to manage them, you're gonna feel, as you head over to the sewing machine, like nothing wants to move. It's genius, it's amazing. And this is not my first Minky project, but it's the first time I thought about this. I mentioned earlier, I'm using some poly thread, a quarter inch foot. So basically quilting, as you know it, minus the iron, okay? So this is poly base, so we're not gonna go over and iron it, you're not gonna need to. But now I've got myself a nice little patchwork here that worked really nicely. So the other tip that I had in here for us all today, um, other than cleaning up, was dun, da, da, dun, da, 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 work with the grain. And so making sure that your grain is traveling in a way, then later on, now all my stretch was in the same direction, but as I went to match up my patchwork after patchwork, because I was doing a checkerboard, I just matched the seam allowances here, and it made it really easy, even across a 60 inch seam, to keep all of my points matched up as much as they need to match up. <laughs> the thickness of the minky makes it when it doesn't match up. No problem, because you can't see it as much anyways, uh, because it's thick and, and fibrous and all that wonderful stuff. So at any rate, let me bounce you all overhead real quick so I can check in on the comments. Oh, Eileen, thank you. She just used the store locator on Michael Miller Fabrics. It, she said it's very handy, absolutely. Uh, Microshex, the best needles, comes in all sizes. I absolutely agree. I love them. What's up, Loretta from Ohio? I'm glad you're here. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of comments out there too. Thank you all that are talking about, um, you know, your personal uses and your personal experiences with the weighted blankets and just that kind of stuff. I mean, it's rad. We do this because we love this. And so um, we might as well use our skills to help others and, and serve others as well, right? I, as well as making it fun. Now, if I was smart, I would have walked out of here. That would have been the end closing thing. But I want to keep talking. I want to see how all of you are doing, although I'm almost out of stuff to say. I promised to keep it 30 minutes today. That was eight minutes back. But, you know, uh, Julie's saying she's loving the videos. I got a lot of comments on how the studio is looking much better. I mean, this is really, really fun, really coming together. And, um, oh, I know what I have to do, but I won't today because I want to kick back with some popcorn, maybe a fresh cup of coffee. But like I said, let's talk about it. The weighted blanket. I'll be right back. The weighted blanket tutorial. The whole thing that takes you through all of the steps is going to post at 2.30 um, or whatever time it is out there. So it's going to post in about 20 minutes for everybody. So you can enjoy that here um, and get inspired with what we've got coming on. And again, um, I, I not should I apologize? Nah, I can't apologize because I'm not able to fix it. I, but I want to let you all know so that you don't have to spend the time typing it up. Yes, I understand that the lighting is odd. Don't let it distract you too much. Um, today, I have a whole different system working within the lighting and the cameras. And so I've actually recorded this on the same cameras that I record the tutorials on. I do the live camera, uh, the live feed on um, iPhones. I had a lot of folks asking me about which um, and how I was doing this. I'm doing it on a switcher system um, and iPhones and it's working really nicely, I think. And then I can record from those as well and chop them up. But at any rate, so I'm gonna look at these videos, maybe even make some quick tips on minky sewing and things. So let's do another check-in, see how everyone else is doing out there. Um, oh, thanks, Peg. I, I, I would miss, Peggy, I would miss doing the videos too. If I wasn't able to do these, or if every time I did a video, my 15-year-old son said, Dad, don't post that, um, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fun. Um, but what is, what is such a blessing is to figure out ways to incorporate my energy, my creativity, and my friends, you know, and I say my friends at Michael Miller Fabrics as if it's like an endorsement, but that's, 
I'm BS because they're my friends. Oh, and they happen to own Michael Miller Fabrics. And then we just saw this great way to all work together. And the fun we were having throughout the weeks, the emails and the chats and all of this stuff and the, the teamwork you can see. Um, so, hey, how about we all throw a shout out to the, the gang today in Manhattan. Hopefully they're not watching this right now, which means they're on their way home doing something else. It's late out there. Um, but, um, you know, Minnie, Lisa, Carl, Crystal, the four of you right away, I know, because you've just been hustling so much and doing so much with the graphics and stuff. And those of you who just visited Making It Fun Today, the YouTube channel, you can see all the new little inslates and stuff that they're doing. And so we're just learning this one day at a time. And isn't that the best thing about life is we really can enjoy our crafts and enjoy our hobbies um, and bless others just one day at a time. And that's what I get to do. And because of all of you, it's just this really awesome thing. So I guess I probably better sign off pretty quick. Um, oh, neonatal uh, intensive care uses weighted blankets. Oh, oh my gosh. Let's talk about that before I go anywhere. Please. I... <laughs> I'm not even a sewing scientist. I have a couple of costumes. I've made myself a few uniforms, but no. Um, please check with your doctor. Please talk to a physician. If you're making a true weighted blanket, a blanket that's gonna be roughly no more than, hear these words correctly, 10% the body weight of the individual that's gonna use the blanket. So if it's for a 100 pound person, a person that weighs 100 pounds, the blanket, fabric, poly pellets, thread, all of it, no more than 10 pounds, 10% or less. And please clear that with your physician to make sure that I haven't given you bad information. In the tutorial I talk about folks, I have this question a lot. What if you know somebody that's 200 pounds that wants it? Great, you need a 20 pound blanket. Not great for your sewing machine, man. It's a lot of work to push that heavy of a blanket through here. So why not make two 10 pounders? Or better than that, make two seven and a half pounders. Quick math says that's 15. That's plenty of squeeze, man. That's a lot of weight down on you. It certainly um, would settle me down, maybe. I don't know, should we give it a try as we sign out today? Oh, I love it. I've been wearing it, it's super snuggly. And the other fun part is, is I've been doing the shake test. Oh, I probably covered my mic. I've been doing the shake test and every now and again, uh, I hear a bean. I have a hole somewhere that I'm going to have to <laughs> stitch up. So watch your seam allowances. Um, have fun making something awesome for somebody else out there. Um, or make something for yourself. Check out the tutorial coming up. Next week, I'm going to be uh, flying again, as I mentioned, to Utah. So bear with me. I've got a really cool video I'm putting together. Uh, Mike and I and my daughter, Ruby, and her friend went to check out the wildflower fields in California over the weekend after prom. Yes, it was a busy, 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 busy weekend. And so sure enough, I've got some fun photos to share with you and a little story of how we picked up Mike along the road. Stay tuned. And in the meantime, keep making it fun, everybody. I am out of here. I'm going to touch some buttons or something, but I'm out of here in a minute anyways.